It started in January. Nine people had been selected from hundreds who had answered a newspaper ad. The tenth person, the mole, was hired by us as a double agent. When they arrived at Melbourne Airport, none of them knew each other, and none of them, except for Alan, knew that there was a mole amongst them. It is now April, just 10 days ago, but this time they're reunited. The final episode has not yet gone to air, so only three of them, Abby, Jan and Alan, know how the whole series ended. Patrick was a really nice person, but sometimes he can be really annoying, I promise. The other seven, all of whom were eliminated along the way, have been kept in the dark about who won the money and who was revealed as the mole. They're reuniting in Sydney to find everything out, to learn who the mole is and to see how he or she operated. I knew they were going to show those videos. They told me they were going to show those videos. Well, then you must be the mole. <laughs> The mood on this bus is very different to the mood on the bus three months before. It was on the bus taking them to their parachute jump that nine of them learned about the mole. ...take part in a series of challenges. Firstly, among the ten of you, there is a traitor, a saboteur, a person whose job it is to disrupt as many of the challenges as possible. That person is the mole. Ahead of them lay an unknown three weeks of adventure and challenges. Ahead of them today lies the discovery of who was deceiving them and how. They and we will see how Alan fooled so many people for so much of the time. We'll see how Alan sabotaged many of the challenges and what it was like to be the mole. We'll find out things they never knew about the other contestants. Who double-crossed who, who was bluffing, and who was lying. It's crap. He knows that and I know that. We'll find out what people really thought about each other. Above all, they and you will see the clues in each episode which you could have used to work out who the mole is. But all that lies ahead. For now, Seven of these people don't even know that Alan is the mole. For two days, all ten of them will be staying at Sydney's Merchant Court Hotel. Their friends reunited, but even now, the games aren't over. We have a challenge for you. <laughs> which is basically, make yourselves at ease. We'll take care of your rooms. Yes, I don't know. And I'll see you a little later on. Thank you. We filmed this before last week's finale went to air. It means that only three of them, Abby, Jan and Alan, know the secret. So they have to be careful about what they say to their fellow contestants. For Alan especially, the time is coming when, at long last, he can talk freely about who he is and what he's been doing. So you've all seen the first seven episodes? Yep. 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 Ending with... Linda. Linda's elimination. Linda. I'm sure you all have a theory. In fact, I know you all have a theory. Could you share it with us? Who will be the winner? Who will be the loser? And who is the mole? Patrick. I'd say <laughs> loser would be Abby. Is that because I said you're annoying? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I said I'd take that back. I'm no. sorry. No, loser Abby. Um, winner, Alan. Mole, Jan. What emerged was remarkable. Even now, very few of the contestants um, guessed that Alan was the mole. It showed what an extraordinary job Alan had done. I would say, I think like you, I think Alan is the winner, um, Jan's probably the mole, and Abby's probably the loser. I think mole is Jan. Sorry, Jan. Um, wow. I still love you, darling. <laughs> winner, I'm going to take Big Al, and the loser. So is this anonymous? We all think I'm a loser. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Alan is the mole. I think uh, Jan is the winner. Abby's the mole, and I think 
<laughs> I do. I think I've just seen all. I think Alan is the loser and Jane is the winner. Thank you. Fantastic. For you three who made it to the last episode, we don't want to hear from you at all. I don't want to hear from Not at all. But thank you very much for playing. You were all there, you know what happened. Who's interested in watching? When I tell you to, move forward and try the lock. The key will open the winner's door. The winner is about to be revealed. He or she has won a hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. The mole is about to be revealed. Congratulations, mm. Alan. You did a great job. But you did a good job, and I think everyone here will still classify you as a good friend. They had mixed feelings towards Alan. They always knew that someone was betraying them. But now that person has a face, the betrayal is harder to handle. Rocky? Rocky, what? What are your feelings about Alan? Um, well, I've got some children at home and I really wouldn't want them to hear me swear on television. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got mixed feelings. Um, you know, I think Al did a fine job. Um, but that's not to say that I agree with, with everything that, that happened. All my intuitive feelings, you know, I'd have Alan in my mind that he was the mole. And, and then I said to him on the night I was eliminated, I'm going to, you know, vote you as the mole and he said I can tell you now I'm not the mole <laughs> and I believed him Bastard. and I went in and I was eliminated and but I'm disappointed in myself I mean I went with that you know that was my choice <laughs> what can I say what can I say mm, my feelings about Alan have not changed at all I reckon he's a great guy and I uh, did a great job obviously very subtle very clever no one picked up on it job well done mate Ten people had shared an extraordinary time together. Some of them became very close friends. Others got on people's nerves. Some were on the trip for just a few days. Others lasted for the full 18 days. As the adrenaline rush. <laughs> At different times, they bonded closely. She's a gutsy lady. Yeah. Okay. We'll go on the ground now. Okay. All right, do you want to They shared tears and laughter. <laughs> on some occasions, they had a great deal of fun. <laughs> At other times, they were in misery. So who are these people? And where did they all come from? If you chunk up high enough or whatever else, you can, you can justify anything. Uh, I did rock and roll classes yeah. earlier this year. I, I get very scared at a lot of things. I try and at least date uh, once or twice a week. I'm not a big-headed person, but I think I'm a very I've, I've got a lot of charisma. Just, just being a generally a, a nice guy, sort of thing. It started with newspaper ads in every state. On offer was the chance to win up to two hundred thousand dollars and the opportunity to spend up to three weeks away from home. The shortlisted applicants were interviewed and each of them did a psychology test. Alan was chosen separately, but even he had to go through the application process just to make sure that he appeared to be just like the other contestants. Of the hundreds who applied to be a contestant, nine people were picked. James was the quiet one. He's a computer programmer and he lives in Shepparton, Victoria. It was James who gave the very first clue about who the mole is. In episode one, on the day that he was eliminated, this is what James said. Now, Alan, Alan 
Alan Allen. He could very well be a prime suspect. I just, at this stage, I don't think I've let, allowed myself to think of it too much because I like him, which is probably a bad move. James? Had James trusted his judgment, he would have made it to the final episode. He might even have won $115,000. No, I haven't found the blue envelope yet. Patrick was the most confident of all, and many thought of him as the mole. He's going to be great for me. He manages a winery in Queensland. I am a very confident person who is arrogant. What you guys? Love you all, okay? Rocky was the motivator of the group. He runs a marketing and advertising business in Sydney. And I, I just thought this would be an opportunity to um, go one step further. Josephine was the most sensitive of all the contestants. Hold on, I'm not ready. Ah! She's an aromatherapy consultant and writer, and she lives in Sydney. Yeah, I pretty much just do creative things. Ben was the heartthrob of the show. If reactions on the Mole website are anything to go by. He used to manage a hotel in Sydney, but he now has an agent and is looking for a career in front of the camera. Um, and like I've always said from the start of, of this show, what is what you get, I'm mean, like an open book. Beverly was the one person everyone loved to hate. In fact, all the time she was in the show, she was the viewer's number one suspect. James Bond, eat your heart out. I just wanted to get in there and have a go on behalf of all those women that are sort of in my age category as well. <laughs> Who would know that you told? Linda was one of the strongest of all the contestants. <laughs> that was pretty bad memory. She's a mum with two kids and she's just started a fine food business in Perth. <laughs> Abby, at just 18, was the youngest contestant. I have not. Many thought of her as dumb and naive, but her survival to the final episode proved there's more to Abby than meets the eye. She's a student and lives in Adelaide. Jan was the winner. Right from the outset, she treated the show not as an adventure, but as a way to win big money. Jan has two children, and she works as a school services officer at Baldwin High School in Victoria. I have a bit of an addiction for competitions, game shows, whatever. And when I saw the advertisement, it was like um, a moth to a flame, if you like. Had to do it. Uh, whose do you think these belong to? Rocky. <laughs> Alan was the mole. In his other life, he's been an environmental health officer, but he now works as a corporate trainer. He lives in Cockatoo, Victoria. One of my mottos, if you like, has been when in doubt, do it. And it's a lot of fun living life that way, although it can get you into trouble sometimes. And I just thought it'd be a great experience. I didn't really think it was going to be as hard or as challenging as what it wound up being. These ten people bonded closely. Some bonded very closely. Ben and Abby were particularly fond of each other. When Ben was eliminated, Abby was devastated. Ben? Ben, we have to go. Three months on, and they both deny that there was anything between them. So you just spent over 24 hours as a group each time someone needs, and you spent this time and you actually do bond, because you have to. Humans are the sort of people which need to have emotional contact with people. But yeah, let's not blow that out of proportion. And the relationship with Abby? Yeah, merely a friend. You know, she's two or three thousand kilometres away. I'd give her a phone call once every two weeks or something. But yeah, great girl. Easy to get along with. No, I mean I get along really well with Ben, but there's nothing. Do you think he thought there was more? Less than that. Uh, no.
Abby also grew very close to Linda. Frames one and two are the lens cap. Oh, that was a blue tone. That was it? Uh, no. I mean, Abby and I were very close. And that's, I suppose she's, she reminds me a lot of my little sister. And I mean, there were so many times I found myself telling her off of, you know, don't drink that or put that on or whatever. And I think she looked to me in a lot. And I suppose because of the trust issue as well, you had to trust someone. We didn't have to, but we chose to trust someone. And that was Abby. And Abby trusted me with her laugh. Normally, you wouldn't go and make a friend that's 10 years, you know, your junior, but we put in extreme circumstances and extreme things came out of that. Linda was to use her friendship with Abby for her own personal gain. It's either you or me, that's all it comes down to, you or me. What loyalty have you got to Bev, Jan, Alan or me? <sighs> Linda extracted information from Abby and earned herself a free pass to the next episode. It cost the group $10,000. Who would know that you told? Gee, I don't know. I know she was using me, 100% using me. There was no doubt about it. I know what Linda's way of thinking goes. For all the contestants, the interrogation challenge was a turning point. From that point on, no one could trust each other. It was to be particularly useful for Alan. Because it's the first time that somebody has sacrificed the money for personal gain. And I think that's um, it's thrown the game, or it's put the game, it's, it's elevated to a whole new level. It's not a After the break, the, the clues you could have seen to discover the mole and how Jan played the game <laughs> to be the winner. If you noticed somebody was observing you, you would deliberately just make a comment that was incorrect. Jan won $115,000 and she beat eight other contestants. So how did she do it? No, I don't want to be seen to be malicious. I'm nice. The person who walks away with the money at the end of the challenge, at the end of the program, will not be someone who people will look at and say, through the whole series, and say, what a wonderful person. Yeah. I'm so glad that that person got the money. One has to be calculating in what one does. In the end, there shall be um, and one. one. Jan turned out to be the one. <laughs> and right from the start, she was using tactics. When people ask me whether I'm the mole, sometimes I say yes, and sometimes I say no. When I say no, I'm being honest. When I say yes, it's because I want to stay. If Jan convinced the others she was the mole, they wouldn't suspect Alan, and she would have a better chance of winning. Surely honesty is the best policy. This is one game where it's not. I would forget the name of the hotel that I worked at. Where about you, Melbourne, you live? Yeah. What pub do you work at again? <laughs> the Tower in Alvington. I would also say that uh, sometimes that I used to do ads and I possibly had an agent. You were talking about a script before, too. Oh, yeah, they, they want to give you a script. You've got an agent. We weren't going to ask you. I don't have an agent, but I'd love one, guy. Hang <laughs> on, right there. You told us today you had an agent. If you noticed somebody was observing you, you would deliberately just make a comment that was incorrect. If someone said, oh, would you have a breakfast this morning? Um, which is sometimes some of the questions. And I'd say, oh, cornflakes. I always have cornflakes. Oh, no, this morning I had muesli. And you'd sort of, and I kept saying, I'm too angelic, I couldn't be the mole. There's no way. And thereby that creates suspicion. Because ultimately, if the person is thinking it's you, then they're not really voting for the person it is. Jan's tactics worked brilliantly. Of the seven eliminated contestants, five were eliminated because they believed that Jan was the mole. Oh. Rocky believes it wasn't just tactics, it was a double cross. I was offered a deal and I took the deal. He claims that Jan told him that she was the mole. With that information, Rocky would win and he would give Jan $10,000 of the prize money. It's crap. He knows that and I know that. I guess I did my deal with the devil and uh, I paid the price. Rocky. That night, Rocky voted for Jan and he was eliminated. Rocky, we have to go. 
Jan denies there was ever a deal. But if there was, it was very clever. Even at the very end, Abby was convinced that Jan was the mole. But Abby had her own tactic. She acted like the mole by appearing suspicious. Episode one, a battery goes missing. What's this? You've been hiding that from us down your pants, huh? Episode five, they lose a challenge and Abby smiles. She takes a crucial photo with the lens cap on, then simply laughs. On the Gordon Dam, Abby could have reached the flag, but didn't. She changes her mind about Linda's behaviour. Yeah, she will have one. She will have one, Drake. She will have one. Oh, I still say no. Okay. It costs them $5,000. She loses the group another $10,000 by giving Linda the information Linda needs. Whether it was or not. But Abby was never going to win because she thought Jan was the mole, not Alan. From the very first episode, Jan was in it to win big money. I want to stay until the end. And not necessarily for the money. Because I honestly believe that whatever the kitty is, if it was 100,000, I'd keep 55 and give everybody else five. I'd love to. It was in episode two that Jan first suspected Alan. The challenge is to record people's laughter without them seeing the camera. I was told to keep the camera wide and incorporate those two people. Now, Alan told me that. With the camera kept wide, Jan had no chance of filming anyone laughing. I do suspect Alan was being mole. Jan watched Alan closely. In episode four, she all but accuses Alan of being the mole, but none of the other contestants can see her. So if the mole goes over, that's one way if the mole can um, get straight through, isn't it? For Jan, it was a gut feeling. My thoughts are that it's Alan. And I can't... I don't know, something here. And his, his evasive behaviour, very friendly one minute, not so friendly the next. It wasn't just Alan's behaviour which gave him away. Throughout the series, there were a number of clues. Some of them were planted by Alan and some by us. Clue one, James Alan. considers voting Alan. for Alan. He could very well be a prime suspect. I just, at this stage, I don't think I've let, allowed myself to think of it too much because I like him, which is probably a bad move. It was a bad move. James, James didn't vote for Alan, and he was eliminated. Clue two. Alan's camera work doesn't seem to be good enough to capture any laughter, but it is good enough to catch Patrick cheating. There's a microphone here and here. I need a laugh. Clue three. Alan's an environmental officer, but he gets a question about the environment wrong and it costs them $10,000. And pressure zones. El Nino and La Nina. Oh, come on. Next step is the smell. Clue four. Alan is the only one to have done a wine course, but he makes no contribution in the wine tasting. Clue five. Alan's the only contestant to go out in the boat. Ten minutes later, when they're rushing back to the dock, the boat mysteriously runs out of fuel. That's five clues so far, but coming up, there are another five clues you could have seen. Also, after the break, what it was like to be the mole. The thing is that playing this role is really hard because it's not a matter of playing, it's a matter of living it. There are ten clues you could have used to spot the mole. Five of them you've seen. Clue six. It looks as though Beverly falls off the raft, losing the challenge. But if she fell off, why didn't Alan stop her? Look closely. It's not Beverly falling off, it's Alan tipping her off. Clue seven. 
Alan and Beverly agree on the four wildlife photos they'll submit. And eight. Thank you. Okay. 18, 14, 10 and eight. Well, 14, a minute later, Alan has given a different number. It's 18. I, I, no, I'd go for 12. All right, Alan. 12 it is then. 12 it is. And even Jan notices. Clue eight. Alan is the only one who's ever abseiled before, but he deliberately misses the difficult flag I've come too friggin' low! and goes for the easier one instead. If he'd reached the difficult flag, it would have left the easier one for Abby and they'd have won $10,000. Clue nine. Alan comes from Victoria. If anyone is going to recognise Essendon player James Hurd, it would be Alan. Yet he remains completely silent. James Hurd from Essendon. James Hurd it is. Yeah. Yay! Yay! Yes. Clue 10, the final giveaway. Just as Ben had done in the first episode, Alan breaks a road rule and loses them $10,000. $10,000 yeah. went begging because Alan did a U-turn over a median strip and broke the law. I'm sorry, guys, you cannot break the law to achieve a challenge. Ten clues to the mole. Obvious in hindsight, but difficult to spot while everything else is going on. Yeah. So For the contestants, there. it was even harder to spot the mole because Alan spent most of his time throwing them off the scent. The day after the filming had finished, Alan revealed exactly how he operated as the mole. My intention was to start off fairly carefully because I didn't want to, I didn't want to be blown in the first... <laughs> the first exercise, number one, the mole's out of here. Great show. His first mole activity was in the hostage challenge. I was in the helicopter in that one and communications were vital for that. We had a little call button that we could press and whenever you did that, it kind of sent out a call or a signal or a message, which meant that anything that was coming in was overridden or hard to hear. Can you say talk louder? I can't hear you. And then uh, when we got to the end of that, the, we had to find the key. And I knew that the key was Velcroed to the back of the, the, the seat. But I made sure that I was the person who was searching for the key. And I spent a lot, a lot of time looking in places where I knew that it wasn't. Now, the Targa Rally. Alan was teamed with Beverly and Rocky. Uppermost in Alan's mind was never to be suspicious. What I was wrapped in, I suppose, was that when we were doing it, um, Bev got nominated to be the navigator. Uh, what, what do you go, surprise, quickly? surprise, everybody. I may not be technical, but I can What do you go, quickly? Turn left. Oh, God, when we, where are we? Beverly's navigation error nearly cost them the challenge. And that was the first, that was the the first of of what I would say a love hate relationship with Bev. I think I must have been his best friend <laughs> in terms of the stuff ups that I managed to do. Beverly was useful for Alan because she was most people's number one suspect. But all the things that made her suspicious were in fact genuine mistakes. In the humour test, she tried her hardest, but somehow never captured any laughter. In the fishing test, Beverly's enthusiasm made her throw the bait away too quickly. All right. And in the survival test on Sarah Island, where anyone could leave the island, but doing so would cost the group $10,000, Beverly was genuinely ill. Beverly, she was, she was a, a godsend for a mole. <laughs> <laughs> Straight ahead, Alan. Alan teamed up with Bev whenever he could so that any sabotage he did might look like a Beverly mistake. In the labyrinth, Bev directed Alan straight towards the hunters. Straight ahead, that's right. Up, round the corner. Now, you're right, you're right. Run for your life. Oh. <coughs> Alan's been tagged. Sorry. Well done, mate. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, it was me. I'm sorry. With the raft, as we now know, it wasn't Beverly's fault. It was all Alan. Twelve, was it? No, fourteen. Fourteen? I thought it was twelve. And with the photos, it wasn't Beverly being forgetful. It was Alan being clever. Beverly was the mole's best friend, but it wasn't always so easy. 
After the break, more of Alan's sabotage. Oh, it was just so close. And how it feels to betray your friends. I really hope that they don't hate me for what I've done. Alan's job was to sabotage as many of the challenges as he could without being discovered. In the humour test, Jan had become suspicious of Alan. Look at the things, and I pointed the thing at the monkeys. No. I'm, when Pointed I say look at the monkeys, I mean the freaking humans. People, not humans, <laughs> monkeys. It's like we're here to look at the we're monkeys, not... you banana. <laughs> but there was one act of sabotage none of them noticed. Also with that one, when we, we went through and we had a little replay of what happened, and the last bit we had quite a bit of good humour on it, uh, and so I managed to erase about the last um, five or six minutes of, of that. Alan's wrong answer in the golf quiz was a major risk. El Nino and La Nina. Oh, come on. That was a fairly blatant one, but because it was a, a fairly difficult question, I don't think that put any undue suspicion onto me. So we move on. We have seven contestants. Go fishing. I actually enjoyed the spear fishing. There's just nothing around. Well, if there is, I'm not good enough to get it, that's for sure. I did have one fish that was about, you know, it, underwater it looked like it was about this big, but based on how big the other ones looked, it probably would have been about that size, sure. which was, oh, it was just so close, and, and I let him get away. And that, that was one of the hardest things I've had to do from a, um, from a mole point of view, if you like, because I really wanted that fish. Whenever Alan sabotaged, he tried to make it look like someone else's mistake. Just one go and then we'll point it out if you can go. What I wanted to do was to go, make sure that we got at least one wrong answer and then just to, to waste a little bit of time. Six, seven. Let's go through that again. Starting from the largest into the smallest. We got the right number of triangles the first time. I made sure we did a recount. 30, there'll be a mirror image of that. Here. 31. 31. But we've already counted that one before. OK, so that's 30. 30. And I was pointing out triangles that were, were had, had, had been included or wasn't sure whether some were included or not, so that we was just a little bit of confusion there. Bear in mind, that's the one we're, we're looking at. Was that included? Yep. Was that one included? Actually, no, it I wasn't included. It no. no. wasn't right. included, I think it was included. 31. Right. But whenever someone was going to succeed, yes. Alan pretended the success was his to throw the others off the scent. When we'd gotten through to the second part... It takes 15 minutes to do 10 kilometres. And where we were looking at the actual mass bed was actually doing quite a good job. So she, she was on the right track and would have got the right answer, so I, I had to make sure I took the pad off her because I didn't want her to come up with having the right answer. Six divided by five. I wanted the credit, if you like, to, to fall on me so that, again, it would, would allay suspicions rather than having it come out as, as Bev actually doing something that was right. Yes. A lot of it I saw was sowing seeds of, of, of doubt or of, or of confusion or of, of misdirection. We're now down to five contestants. We went off to the Gordon Dam for the abseiling. Looks like it's up to you. Yeah, it does. Beverly was left at the top on her own. I'm freaking at this stage. She was a surprise packet in a lot of ways, and, I, and, and all credit to her, she had the guts to go over the edge. When she came down, and she got down towards the bottom, and I got hold of the rope, um, I thought the thing to do with Beverly is just keep her moving, keep her swinging, babe. <laughs> so I kept her going around in circles and loops and, and doing as much as I can to, to give her uh, seasickness on land. Um, I don't think it would have been all that pleasant where she was. Stop me from swinging, please. Just come down, Bev. Okay? On the ground. That was the episode that Bev went. Beverly, we have to go. Kind of sad that was. <laughs> I can see. I'm just going to take a photo. In Abby's celebrity photo challenge, Alan pretended not to recognise Essendon player James Hurd. Talk to you guys. I'd been reading the paper that morning, and because I'm a Victorian, I follow AFL football. I could have told you what James Hurd had for breakfast. James Hurd from Essendon. James heard it and is. if Linda hadn't have recognised him, I wouldn't have. In the roulette challenge, Alan drew the hardest challenge of all, to spin the roulette wheel three times and do all three tasks. The black tasks were always easier than the red ones, and Alan genuinely rolled three blacks black in a row. <laughs> if I had have rolled a red, I probably wouldn't have done the red. Yes. Um, but when I got the three blacks in a row... <laughs> that was probably uh, the single best opportunity I had to throw people off. <laughs> in the treasure hunt, they needed to find four out of six treasures. Alan found only one treasure, 
a lost mobile phone, but his breaking of the road rules lost the group $10,000. To give an opportunity to make sure I could be disqualified, I, I did a few U-turns over median strips. So that was a pretty blatant act of sabotage. Yeah. Alan did a U-turn over a median strip and broke the law. Yeah. I, I got the, the tar, I got the phone, Sorry, but guys. really that was a, that was probably the most blatant thing that I did. But I thought there was a reasonably good chance I could get away with it. And I could always argue my case and say how hurt and wrongfully dealt with that I was. Mm. Unbelievable. You guys are unbelievable. Which I was. It may have seemed like a game, but for Alan, parts of it were very tough, as his final video diary revealed. OK. Take two. Last ever mole cam. I'm the mole. Uh, I'm so glad that the mole's job was finished, or was almost finished. It's been by far the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life. I really hope that they don't hate me for what I've done. The others don't yet know what Alan did to sabotage their efforts. Did you know that question? They'll find out after the break. Oh, Alan! <laughs> Before the contestants left Tasmania, they were sworn to secrecy. They weren't allowed to tell anyone when or if they'd been eliminated, or who they thought the mole was. Keeping the secret wasn't easy. Now, last night after watching the mole on Channel 7, you had the chance to decide who was the mole, and we have the results oh. today from the Mix 94.5 Channel 7 mole poll. Yeah, he's looking at me dead straight in the eye, wait, waiting to give something away. Now, what was it like yeah. watching it, you know? You just had to be so switched on at so many times of people. So many people want to try and trip you up with interviews and things like that that I've been doing, and, and the, like, you know, just say one thing, and you just think... <coughs> And you've got to retract it, and you think, don't say that. Yeah, yeah nice. Thank thanks you. for telling us nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting 20. good at it. So who's the mole? Can't tell you who the mole is. Most of the contestants love the publicity, especially Ben, who's looking for a career in front of the camera. All cameras again. I do love this. Now, for the past two months, we've been on the edge of our seats as the real life Who Done It has been played out on our television screens. I've just been the normal Joe Blow. Thanks for coming in, Benny. Who is the mole, mate? Duncan, I can't answer that question. And to be recognised, I don't know if it's an ego thing or what, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoy it. Mm. Catching up with Abby, yeah. fantastic. Mm. And Rocky and Linda. <laughs> mm. Everyone else. No, no secrets there at all. Ben, thanks very much for Thank coming into the show, mate. And uh, congratulations on everything in the mole. Yeah, that, that oh, Abby was that. under greater pressure to keep the secret from her family and friends. She knew the identity of the mole. Now I just get called mole. Because they, like, they just call out, they've changed all my voicemail to mole. Are you the mole? I can't tell you that. Oh, sorry. Come on, come Jan had a double secret to keep. She couldn't tell her friends and family who the mole is or that she'd won $115,000. As awful as it sounds, it actually becomes easier to lie. It wasn't until last week's reunion that they could even talk to each other about who the mole is and what really happened. But it all came out over dinner. So, I never ever, ever went with like a pair with you. Did you know that? Yeah. Because everybody was trying to get away from Bev because of. <laughs> Sorry, no, Bev, no, 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 no idea. Bev was my my greatest asset in so many things, <laughs> and a thanks to everybody that managed to pair me up with Bev all the time because. That's it. I've had enough, guys. I'm sorry. I have to go. Buggy. <laughs> I turned down the volume switch on Jan's headset so she couldn't hear things. Um, I couldn't she, hear anything. Which she almost caught me at. I was like, I really, really wanted to get that flag. I, I swear, I touched it and I just thought, I mean, yeah. it's difficult a, when you're going down and I really was relying on... Yeah. You did a fabulous job. And then when Bev did come down, I know what it's like dangling on the end of the rope, so instead of just keeping her still, I was swinging her around from left to right. <laughs> I thought you were just like, doing it because you were frustrated with it. You're like, what? Yeah. The uh, wildlife you go, Beverly. <laughs> Beverly. <laughs> oh, no, no. When it came time for the raft out there, if you notice who was supporting the raft, and who was asking for it to happen, and Bev, who was on the the, the raft, and who actually tipped Bev off into the water. 
in front in front of everybody, regardless whether the whether oh, the right. Come on, we didn't know in the family. While we're enjoying our dinner, something I clean forgot. One small accounting matter. Alan, could you pass that around the table to Jan? No. It's a check for a hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Jan won it, but the money was earned by all of them. Oh God, very rarely am I lost for words, but I don't know what to say. Thank um, you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> to Jan. Thank you, Jan. To Jan. And congratulations, Jan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Tonight, the search for Kim's mother intensifies. Who will break the law to uncover the truth? Plus, the dangerous blonde bombshells back when Home and Away continues. Coming up next on Prime is the Midday Movie.